Hello, I'm Kirosha Kamal and welcome to CSIR Connect. 2025 is a milestone year for the CSIR as we celebrate 80 years of touching lives through innovation. The evolution and growth of the CSIR for the past eight decades have been nothing short of phenomenal whilst marking our footprint for scientific and technological innovation in service to South Africa. CSIR's forward-looking mindset has indeed helped our business stay relevant and effective in addressing current and future societal needs. Please join me for this special edition of Connect, where I sit down with our CEO, Dr. Tulani Dlamini, as he reflects on our organization's strategic direction, whilst also articulating his vision for the CSIR. Let's get into that conversation now. Dr. Dlamini, firstly, a warm welcome to CSR Connect today, especially as we reflect on our milestone 80th anniversary. Oh, thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. Now, Dr. Dlamini, as I mentioned, we are celebrating 80 years, um, and the CSR has officially turned this age marking eight decades of touching lives through innovation. How do you feel about this milestone? Well, one cannot help but be excited um, by a milestone of this nature, of course, it's not just that we are attending eight years. I think it's the state that we find ourselves in, you know, at the time when we turn eight years an organization. I think over the past seven years, building on the excellent work that has been done, you know, by the predecessors in the CSIR, from the leadership you know, to the colleagues that have worked here, you know, over this time. I think we've taken the organization one step higher, you know, in terms of the work that we've done and the impact that we have created in, in government, in industry, as well as in society. I think we've been very deliberate about this, that we want to ensure that the CSR creates a visible and meaningful impact you know, to the stakeholders that we serve. Um, so one is very, very delighted that uh, we turn 80 at a time when the CSR is very strong. There are challenges, of course, that we will continuously deal with, that we navigate. Uh, but the organization is very well, very well positioned, I would say, for the next eight years of our history. So it's a very exciting period. And one reflects, you know, on the past eight years with a sense of pride, you know, of the achievements that we've made as an organization. And there are many, you know, from the time that we were established in 1945, you know, the contributions we've made, for instance, to the creation of the electronics industry in South Africa. You know, this is work that was pioneered by the very first president of the CSR, mm. Dr. Basil Shenden, around radar technology. And what is interesting is that the capabilities that we built then, in 1945, still find relevance today. I mean, today we are still doing work in radar. One of the big projects that we are doing today is the partnership that we have with the German enterprise to, to develop a phased array radar technology. And we already have clients that are willing to buy this. But our contribution goes beyond that, you know, to CSR playing a very meaningful role in terms of the creation of the missiles industry in South Africa. Mm -hmm. you know, through the enterprise that we spun off in the 70s, you know, um, our work um, in terms of the monitoring of the high voltage power transmission lines, you know, the camera that we developed that we've now commercialized with a partner. I think South Africa has 50% of the global market share in this technology. You know, to some of the recent developments, you know, the work that we did during COVID and the advances that we are doing today, you know, for instance, in precision agriculture, supporting um, digital currency development within South Africa and um, the work that we're involved with now around the development of vaccines you know, for, for South Africa. So CSR continues to be a force for change, a force for development, and a force for advancement of South Africa, but also of the African continent. So one is filled with a sense of strong pride you know, about the milestone that we will be celebrating you know, on the 5th of October this year. Wonderful. A force for advancement. I love that so much. Um, Dr. Damini, you have previously spoken about how looking ahead, one of the organization's main priorities is to actually continue contributing to a capable state and at an accelerated pace. Now, what are some of the key focus areas that will ensure this goal is actually achieved? Well, I think it's not only you know, us contributing towards the creation of a capable state. I think we always talk about the dual responsibility that we have as a CSIR. On you know, one hand, to ensure that 
we contribute towards supporting the development of a capable state within South Africa, but also contributing towards supporting industry. You know, it's about these two responsibilities that we always talk about that we have within the organization. And that's not going to change. One of the conversations that we are having today is around how can we ensure that there is more utilization of the capabilities that exist within the CSR by the state. In fact, we'll be taking a statement to cabinet very soon on this matter, seeking cabinet to support us to ensure that government departments, state-owned entities, provincial governments, really tap into the capacity that has been created by the state within the CSR mm -hmm. to support the state. So we see that as a, a very significant part of what we need to do, you know, as a, as a science council. And that obviously speaks to our growth, and I want to lead into the next question premised on that. Um, Dr. Tamini, which emerging global trends you believe will best influence the direction of our organization's future? We've looked back, now let's look forward. Well, the one area that I think will, sh will shape science, technology and innovation across the world, including within the CSR, is artificial intelligence. Um, it's such a game changer that we really need to get on top of that, you know, as a tool that we can utilize, you know, mm -hmm. to, to support our research, development and innovation endeavors within the organization, but also to support our business, you know. And therefore, artificial intelligence, I think in time, uh, as, as it is already happening, I think we'll see more and more of this, where it becomes, you know, a platform for everything that we do, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of designing research, in terms of you know, running our business, you know, in terms of the different functions that exist within the organization. So AI is really going to be a big thing for us that we'll need to invest in, in terms of the infrastructure that we need, the digital infrastructure that we need to be able to tap into the potential of artificial intelligence, the human capital that we require for this. Uh, so it is something that is really going to be receiving a lot of attention you know, going forward. I love that, and especially if we're speaking about tapping into uh, AI, we've got, you know, the credentials at, at this organization very much indeed, so. Indeed, indeed, indeed. I think, but we need to, we need to tap into that capacity, you know, not just for research, but yeah. also in terms of supporting us, in terms of the business processes that we run within the organization. Absolutely. Now, Dr. Lamini, um, given the rapidly evolving uh, economy, how do you envision the organization's role in the global stage in the next five years? And this is once again looking to the future. You know, over the past seven years, we've grown our international business significantly. You know, if you look at turnover from international clients, it has gone by, grown by over a hundred percent. You know, over the past seven years. So we're going to continue in that trajectory. Of course, the world is changing uh, very rapidly. Uh, there are geopolitical dynamics that uh, would have an impact on us. I think the decisions, for instance, by the U.S. to to reduce, you know, funding towards developing countries is going to impact us. The wars that we are seeing, you know, in the Ukraine, in the Middle East, I think those bring about, you know, changes that we need to manage very carefully. But of course, with every cloud, there's always a silver lining, you know. For instance, we might see, and we want to work towards this, you know, new opportunities for us, for instance, in terms of using our capabilities in defense and security, yes. you know, to tap into new opportunities in Europe and Union, for instance, as well as within the African continent, you know. And we're beginning to have some of those conversations. So we think, despite, you know, the, the clouds that we see around, there are opportunities that we can tap into as an organization, based on the capabilities that we've built over the years. Yes, based on the capabilities. Dr. Dlamini, just by today's conversation, you've really reminded us of the sheer excellence that exists in this business. And also, um, especially as we celebrate 80 years of touching lives through innovation, you've set the tone for CSIR's robust and epic future. So I want to thank you so much for that. And thank you for joining us today. It has been such a pleasure engaging with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Societal impact is at the core of everything we do. CSIR's mission is deeply rooted in improving the quality of lives of South Africans, not just advancing science for the sake of it. From brilliant people to excellent solutions, 80 years later, this mission has only intensified. On that note, I'd like to thank our very special Connect guest, Dr. Dlamini, for joining us today and to you for watching.